Welcome, board members, to another edition of Meet the Game. Today, we're going to meet the game Reichholt by Uwe Rosenberg. I am looking at my shelf right now at a couple of famous Uwe Rosenberg games, Caverna the Cape Farmers and Feast for Odin. I love both of those games immensely. I've not played Reichhold. I've not watched any videos on this game. I've had it on my shelf since December 20. Third, uh, maybe December 26th, now that I think about it, because I got it on a sale at our local game store here. Um, so it's been sitting on my shelf. I just took the plastic off so I can spare myself the embarrassment and spare you the ugliness that is me fighting with plastic. So let's see what's inside. Reichold. Art, again, stunning. It says the artist is Lucas Sigmon, and Lucas... You have done a tremendous job on this box, and hopefully the art inside. Uh, Renegade Games is on this, as is Frosted. I've never heard of Frosted other than seeing it here. But Renegade Game Studio, I have quite a few of their games, notably um, Clank, the deck-building dungeon game. That's one, I believe. I believe Saikatsu is Renegade Games. I know Lanterns is Renegade Games. No, Saikatsu is IDW. I'm getting off track. Lanterns is Renegade Games, though, for sure. Another great game. All right, what do we have in here? Well, we have a stop sign. Let's see. Attention, please do not open. Only when you're familiar with the game. Okay, well, I am not familiar with this game, therefore I will not open you stop sign cards. Shovel. One. One shovel. So, shovel. You will be disheveled. Let me bring this beautiful piece of art back in here. Move this over just to keep that there. Okay. Um, pack cards will open you in a minute. Okay, so plenty of wooden pieces, as Uwe Rosenberg loves to do. Um, I'm wondering if this is a farm game. Oh, yes, they look like carrots. These look like strawberries, mushrooms, I'm, I'm guessing here, and heads of lettuce. That's, that's my guess on these. Wooden discs and some pawns in this bag. Oh, we are to apply stickers. We get to apply stickers. Okay. Um, extra plastic bags for storage. And I'm going to guess wool for here. All right. Vegetable and Tourism in Iceland, a game for one to four players by Uwe Rosenberg. Well, thank you for making it for one player, Uwe, because I can't wait to play it. All right, so yes, those are worker discs, um, player cards, start player card, greenhouse cards, and then, oh, story mode. Okay, those are story mode cards. That's cool. All right, so we've got tomatoes. I was wrong on the strawberries. Tomatoes, lettuce, mushrooms, cauliflowers. I was wrong on the wool. And carrots. Okay, we've got goods tiles. We've got goods boxes. So it looks like i got to build some crates. Um... A covering tile for three-player games. Uh, three and four players is on this side of the board, and one and two players on the back side of the board. That's great use of the of the space. And then there are eight game round tiles and some good tiles. Okay, well, let's uh, let's dig into what the rest of this looks like here. Here is the. Let's pour it out because there's a vacuum seal. Nice lush, fertile ground ready to be planted. Let's take a look at the board. We've got, I don't know if it's work, I'm, I'm assuming worker placement, um, as many of his games are. So here's a bunch of different actions. This looks like maybe it's a market of some sort. Oh, I'm really excited to try this game. Man, can't wait to play it. Okay. Uh, that's the, that's the three and four player side. The one and two player side has some like empty lots on that and empty lots at the other side. So here's what it looks like kind of in total. Great looking game. I, I hope it's a lot of fun. Hope it's a lot of fun. All right. Let's start popping out the... Oh, they said there was eight round markers. There's two, three, four, five, and six. Gotcha. Here's number one. So we're looking for seven and eight, and there they are. Seven and eight. Okay. This is the, the board they said that you cover if it's a three-player game. 
Then there are the the, the crates, for lack of a better word. Looks like okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna make some bold assumptions. I'm gonna try this on the cauliflower crate here. By the way, everything's popping out really well. No hangers today. I'm gonna assume that we bend this. Oh man, I just heard it snap. Let me just double check that we're supposed to bend this. Yep, it's just gonna assume that we are smart people and we're gonna bend this and assemble it like this and then take this and we've got ourselves a goods crate or cauliflower. I mean, it's really cool um, if you think about it, like the component tray, and then it's even got it's even got handles, which is funny, but it does. So there they are, handles. Uh, okay, so that's cauliflower mushroom crate, lettuce crate. Let's build some of those. Okay, that goes together. Just hoping it all goes together just fine and dandy with no issues. And so far, that's been the case. It's in nice and snug, which is nice. I will say. I feel like I'm doing something wrong only for the fact that there are these little notches here and nothing goes in them. I have no other reason to say I'm doing something wrong other than that. So I could totally be wrong about doing it wrong, but I feel like as a result of those notches, I'm doing it wrong. It could have just been a... Oh, I'm... Mm. Hmm. Well, I, I mean, those fit in the notches, but there's no way to, okay, there's just no way to do it. There's no way to do it to get these to fit in there, but it absolutely fits in there. Oh, well. If I see it another way somewhere else, I will make an adjustment to my setup. For now, I will stick to that because it's working. What would be crazy is if it's used to stack. Oh, it's used to stack the crates. That's cool. I mean, they are not, oh, I'm not holding it. I'm shaking it pretty well. It's not falling. I mean, I don't know why you stack them, but okay, that's the thing. Let's just get to popping out some of these tokens so that this can be done. Pop out those tokens. Let's get the carrot box all handled. This one is done. Spend no more time debating those little those little holes. Huh. Well, it's not for stacking in here though, because it doesn't fit if I try to go too high. Uh, all right, more of these. They're popping out okay. I don't feel any of them ripping or tearing. That's a good sign of quality. Let's 
just the worst when that... Oh yeah, see? That's a bummer. But it's on the piece that's staying, so I don't care. Now if that was on the piece of the game, I still wouldn't like... I wouldn't write the company and demand they send me a new one because that's ridiculous. It would just be a bummer. But hey, if it's going to come off, I'd rather it come off on this, on this than on the piece. And last but not least, the tomato crate. Last but not least, the tomato crate. We can do this. Tomato crate and I are one. I'm one with the tomato crate. No? Yes. Yes. Okay. With those assembled, just take a look in the um, goods boxes. I'm just wondering if you put the... Do you put the... Looks like the wooden tokens go in there, not the cardboard tokens. And the difference, those are called wooden goods and goods tiles. So these are goods tiles, these are wooden goods. So I don't know that I want to pour these out of the bag. Let's get uh, let's get sticking. Sticking some stickers. Okay. At least they're wearing the color clothes that match their Wooden token. That helps a lot. Hello, Blue Farmer. Hello, Mr. Sticker Man. I mean, I, I'm i talking to him. I might as well assume that they're going to answer me, right? And one last one for the blue. Oop. See? Okay. Yellow farmer. Good morning. I don't know why you sound very British. It's okay. Figure it out. And then, interesting enough, the pink tokens have purple farmers. Because they are reliving the 80s when clothes were turquoise, teal, pink, and purple, the patterns all in the same piece of clothing. The windbreakers most especially had that color variant and some tennis shoes. Or Trainers, as Sophie Turner likes to remind us in her Quibi commercial. How's that for evergreen content? Okay, one more sticker to stuck. And I really am, I'm, I'm assuming these stickers go in here. I think I saw it in the book to do this. Wouldn't that be crazy if after all that? No, you're supposed to wrap them around your favorite wine bottle. But anyway, let's get putting all those. Actually, let's just put them back in the small bag from whence they came. Well, before we do that, I can do that off camera. Let's take a look at these cards don't say stop. One of the things I'm liking already, well, okay, one of the things I'm not liking is my inability to manipulate plastic focus strength must. I should always bring some type of something to these unboxings to fight the plastic. I always bring fingers to a plastic fight. This is the first player card. Some round order cards. And then these look like um, garden plots. Uh, they, oh, okay, I was going to say they're all the same, but nope, they're different configurations. 
And then some kind of item cards, mixed seed, hungry guests, fertilizer, carrot patch, pitchmen, seeding bowls, mushroom sales contract, tomato sales contract. These cards are hefty. Like they have a nice linen finish and they're big. They're not like little, those mini cards. Uh, funny enough, in a lot of Ube Ro Rosenberg games, uh, they have those little, you know, the mini cards. They're smaller. These are nice and big, chunky cards. So love it. That's going to do it for the unboxing of Reichholt by Uwe Rosenberg. I'm not going to open the stop cards. I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm going to learn this game, maybe run through story mode as solo on Solo Play Mondays. So thanks for joining me on this edition of Meet the Game, Reichhold, and we'll see you at the next boardroom meeting.